Hi, I'm Ed Del Castillo, and I'm the president of Liquid Entertainment, and I'm here to show you Rise of the Argonauts, which is coming out in 2008. So Rise of the Argonauts is a retelling of the classic Greek myth of Jason and the Argonauts, where Jason goes after the Golden Fleece. Where we've kind of added some spice to the story is Jason has lost his wife, and he's going against the gods to find this Golden Fleece, which is the way to bring his wife back. Now, along the way, there's a ton of people Jason can meet, which turns this whole little fighting adventure into a huge RPG. The nations are all broken up into different islands. Every island is kind of themed after a different god. And on every island, you can find Argonauts to gather to you. Uh, you have a boat called the Argo, and on that boat, you can put a number of people, and you can use them in different levels as you move through the islands. So you're going to gather the, the fighting elite of the Greek mythology world, people like Hercules, people like Odysseus, Atalanta, Perseus, all the very famous heroes, Achilles, you're going to be able to use them in our game. All of the islands, as I mentioned earlier, are kind of themed after all the gods. And in this particular uh, video that you're watching is, is the island of Veronis. Veronis is an island inspired by Artemis. So Artemis is the goddess of the hunt, as the goddess of the hunt. She has a very wooded area. She is, and all the islands are very different. If you have, you know, when we go to the Apollo Island, it's all desert. When we go to Ares' Island, it's a huge volcano, and it's got an arena in it. And so there's some really wonderful stuff going on in the game. Every single island, as you journey through it, very, 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 very uh, deep, very, very uh, complex story in terms of dialogue choices in terms of fighting uh, but what we've really tried to do here with this game is remove a lot of the the unnecessary complexity of RPG we've taken out a lot of the inventory we've taken out a lot of the the little micro stat management and we've digested or we've broken up the game into two hour chunks so almost like a like an episode of a movie or or, or just a, a nicely encapsulated play experience Every island, the first time you play it, is a two-hour experience. Then, after you kind of unlock that island with that two-hour experience, you can come back to it again and again and again, and there are all sorts of quests that intermingle between the two. In this particular island, the story of this island, uh, Veronis, is that Jason's looking for the belt of Orion. That belt, uh, is only, of course, is only worn on by Orion, and Orion happens to be on this island. As you come on the island, you discover that there's something that's gone completely wrong. Some of Orion's crewmen have violated the rules of this island, and so the island is fighting back. Artemis's servants, the Dryads, are, are kind of just unleashing holy terror on, on everybody here. And so Jason kind of fights his way through and inevitably finds Artemis, which you're seeing now, and has this kind of long debate. Now, there's a couple of things I want to mention here. There's a couple of things I really want to talk about because this conversation is very important. It's one of many conversations, but one of the things that we've decided to do is, number one, no more text choices. We've gone with a graphical interface for, for the dialogue so that it's more, it's more expressive of your emotion and less you're reading a line than saying a line, you know, than the Jason saying a line. We just found that that was very flat. And although a lot, of, a lot of RPGs do it, we just find that there's a lot more spice in not knowing what Jason's going to say until he says it, but instead kind of picking his mental disposition, if you will. Important things about the, com about the conversation are there's a lot of choice in the conversations. And, and you know, if you played most RPGs, you know there's the right choice, the wrong choice, and the filler choice. You never choose the filler choice because it's obvious that it's the filler choice. You, and you want to choose the wrong choice because it's the dirty, you know, it's the nasty choice. It's the choice you really want to use. But you never do because you know you're going to be punished for doing it. So you always choose the right choice. That isn't really a choice. Those are false choices is what we call those over liquid. What we've done is we've taken a page from, you know, we've, from all the other games that we've developed, and we give you different choices that are all equally rewarding. So, for example, in our game, when you choose uh, choice A, let's say, you will make Artemis happy, but you'll make Ares unhappy. And for those of you who don't know what those words are, there, we have a lot of gods in this game. And so a lot of the gods are always watching Jason to see what he's doing. And because we have the ability to reward you with, these, with the growing favor of these gods, every choice you make is going to be equally rewarding but to a different god. And this is, again, something you guys haven't seen before in an RPG, is typically in an RPG, conversations have no impact on the growth of your character. Conversations are just there as gates to slow you down and to make you, want, you, know, make you kind of jump through hoops before you move on to the next part of the game. Uh-uh, in our game, 
conversations actually, can actually evolve your character. So for example, if you have, you're going to be able to have a conversation with Artemis, and you can choose to be arrogant, in which case you'll make Ares happy and you'll make Artemis unhappy. Or you can choose to be supplicant, in which case you'll make Artemis happy, but you'll make Ares unhappy. And this kind of choice will affect your skill tree. It'll affect the moves you get, it'll affect the abilities you get. And although not as greatly as combat, it will have a dramatic impact on the way you evolve as a character. So you can move the entire game as an arrogant Jason and be very powerful with Ares. Or you can move through the game as more, you know, kind of, uh, let's say, I'll, I'll use, the, use this term in quotes, hippie Jason. And as a result, you'll have a whole different evolution path. So I don't think you've seen that before. And that's something that's really exciting. The other thing that you just saw in that video was all of the equipment in the game is very um, impactful. Jason is now in this final battle with the boar here. Jason is actually wearing Orion's belt. You can see it with the three glowing dots there. He wasn't wearing that before. And one of the really great breakthroughs that I think we've made is we've stopped just giving you a ton of loot and trash. We, what we, instead we do is every single piece of loot we give you, every single piece of equipment is very significant. So. Even if, you don't, you know, even if you don't know where to go, you'll certainly find that like, as you see things in the world, they'll guide you. you know, you'll, you'll see a spear on the ground and you'll say, okay, well, here's a piece of equipment for me to get. There's no hidden, there's no hidden gear. It's not like I rip open a body and I find some gems. Instead, we, what you have is every single piece of equipment that Jason can get is in the world. Every single piece of equipment that Jason is, is using is wearable and we take, in, we take control of that equipment just enough to make it look good on the costume. Just enough to make it look good on the hero. So Jason never looks like a clown. He never looks like he's been dumpster diving in medieval London, which a lot of RPGs end up looking like. You know, they, they just put on a ton of you know, red gear here, blue gear here, and green gear here. And that just, that just isn't as cool as a guy who looks all together. So now, I'm gonna flash forward to the combat and try to catch up here. Um, in the beginning of this combat, you saw a number of guys standing on the rim of this arena. Those guys were all hunters that you saved. There's a lot of cause and effect in our game. So the hunters are all lost in the woods. As you save them, they all come, on, they come into this arena. And when, when you fight this final boss battle, the number of hunters you save is actually represented on the arena. So the more you save, the more are there in order for you, in, in making this kind of boss battle easy for you, or easier for you. The other things you're seeing here, you've seen back to back, you've seen two cinematic moves that Jason has done. Uh, Jason has a lot of very context sensitive movements. Jason has a lot of really interesting different moves depending on the monster he's fighting, depending on the creatures he's fighting. Um, all of the Argonauts that come with him also have super moves and special moves. You probably just saw uh, Hercules wrestling the boar. That's one of the special moves that Hercules has. Again, very cinematic, but also very contextual because he doesn't do that to other people. He just wrestles the boar. Just like Jason right now does that jump strike, that's just for the boar. So imagine, as you will, going through this game and seeing different uh, mythological creatures and fighting them differently each time but with the same interface because all of the moves are contextually oriented to the same buttons so you don't have to memorize new buttons you don't have to memorize anything in order to be able to keep moving forward I'm really excited about what we're going to show you here too what we're about to show you is we're, we're, give, we're, we're going to our combat test bed and we're going to show you how some of the human movement is carried off Jason is actually going to show you what he can do with a spear he can throw it he can stab people with it. He can uh, pin people to the ground. We're going to try to pin one here for you to the wall. Um, as you can see, he can stick and throw guys. What we've done is we've created a very visceral Jason. Not, not, a, not huge moves, but enormously powerful moves. Jason's doing a lot of really wonderful things here. Um, we have real full-time physics going on. We have the ability to pull people in and out of physics. Um, we have what we call the dynamic animation system. And unlike a lot of other RPGs where you've seen before where they talk about, oh, the hero has 16,000 animations. Oh, this is beautiful. Right here, we have um, Jason breaks the shield with the mace. The mace is a very powerful shield-breaking weapon. Cuts the guy in half. Pleasing. All right, now Jason's joined by Hercules. He's going to, we're going to show you some of the team combo moves that we got. I think these are going to be really fun for you to see. Okay, so he's fighting on his own now, but just give Hercules a minute. Hercules is going to grab a guy here, and Jason's going to figure out how to get to that guy, and boom, gets to cut his head right off. 
So really impactful moments, really great physics stuff that we're doing here. Because now when he stabs that head with a spear, it gets to be on the, on the head of that spear. I'm going to throw it right at the camera just so you can see it. Again, breaking the shield with the mace. So there's a lot going on under the hood here, a lot maybe that we might not be able to see because it's moving so fast. But Jason's body is separated in multiple sections. His arms move independently of his legs, which moves independently of his torso, which moves independently of his head. His head is always looking at the target. His, his torso can twist in order to face the enemy. It's, I think it's the future of combat. I think you're going you're gonna to be so blown away by the combat in, this, in, in an RPG like this. And that's really what we were trying to do when we built this game. We really just wanted to put the best combat you've ever seen in an RPG before. The one thing I haven't talked about is the gods and Jason. All of the skills, all of the abilities, all of the powers that Jason gets, they all come from the gods. The more Jason does, the different things that Jason does affect the gods differently. And we have this whole wonderful, um, we've abandoned experience points, we've abandoned the point system and those little fiddly bits that remind you that you're playing a game. And we've gone to what we call a deed system, or more importantly, we just, you're doing things, you're achieving things in the game. You're, you, as, you, as you have achievements in the game, those achievements are logged. They're like badges or medals or, or deeds is what, you know, one of the tags we use. And those deeds, um, you can kind of dedicate those deeds to a god. When you dedicate your, those deeds to a god, you have the ability to gain favor with that god. Gaining favor with that god really at the end of the day means you're improving your skills, you're improving your character, and you're progressing the story in a very profound and, and really interesting way. So I hope that you've really liked what, we, what you've seen today. Rise of the Argonauts is coming out in 2008, and it's going to be a really awesome game.